Hey, welcome to Salon Girl Gardens today. So I've had a lot of you asking me to do a video on my pond. And let me just say, I am not a pond expert, nor do I pretend to be. I'm just gonna share what I did to create my pond and just several things to think about and consider if you'd like to do it in your garden. I think right now, since a lot of us are staying home, um, you're looking for some projects and this might be a fun thing to do with your family. It brings in so much wildlife. The birds drink from it. The butterflies drink from it. Toads and frogs come to it. I have goldfish in it. The tinkling of the water just creates a whole ambiance in the garden that contributes to all the beauty that you see. I live very close to the freeway and it also helps muffle the sound of the cars at the freeway. And for me, that's super important. So I started out really small. My mom gave me a pond shell. It's a prefab pond shell with three little legs and it was meant to be used on a patio. Well, I dug a big hole and I sank it into the ground and started with that small pond. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So that blue circle <laughs> planting area that I have garlic planted in right now is a prefab patio pond shell with legs on the bottom. That's what I sunk into the ground. That was my very first pond. So this area of my pond was the original hole that originally held that blue fiberglass pond shell. And so I took it out and then all that was left to do was dig out this section in through here. So my pond is 10 feet long, four feet wide and three feet deep. I did the digging myself. I dug it all out. I used, I used carpet underlayment first, and then I spread the liner. I filled it up with water, and then I started outlining the edges with flagstone. These big guys, those three big fish are my original three fish from when I had the little round blue pond. Can you see that black fish right there? <laughs> so my fish are super happy in here. Obviously they have babies every year. Things to consider when having a pond. Never get a pond that requires more expensive filtration than you can purchase. This is an aqua pond water filter, it's a UV water filter, uh, which means there's a UV light that sterilizes the water to prevent algae growth. So this is what a pond filter looks like. So this box inside, there is a UV light. It's a light bulb and it sterilizes the water that gets sucked into this container and then it pushes it out the fountainhead. While that water is in there, there's biofilter, and it just helps clean the water more complete before it gets pushed out through the fountain. It also goes through a cotton filter and that filter. So it's a four layer protection level before that water ever comes out of the filter box. That is super important. You will have a green pond if you don't have a UV filter. Your aim is to strive for a perfect balance between fish, plants, water, and sunlight. At nighttime, toads come to my pond and it becomes a breeding ground for toads.
those are the eggs of toads in those long ropes. That's so cool, Pollo. Yeah. That's one of the babies from last year. I hope and literally millions will hatch out of this pond later in the summer. These are the American toad egg sacks. Quite fascinating. If I don't want a million of them, I will fish most of them out of the so pond. So my filter here is a small aquapond water filter and it's about $200. I usually have to replace this every two years. I uncovered the rocks and the cording just to show you what's involved with this. So I have power running from my patio to the pond pump and the UV filter. So just understand that you'll have tubing, electrical cord to deal with and to hide. Things I wish I had done differently with my pond. I wish I had made it bigger. I wish that this tree was not up above it and I'm working on getting this removed completely. This is a Vitex and it drops just so much seed. Um, and of course it goes right into the pond. In the fall, I put this row covering over the pond and this keeps out most of the falling leaves. Another thing I kind of wish I had done differently, but I don't really like the look of it, is to have a raised pond. But as I get older, it's harder and harder to get down here and fiddle with the pump. And I just imagine the older I get, it's gonna become worse. But for right now, it's still okay. I've got, you have to get water lilies when you have a pond. Look at that big fat water lily, look at that. And so there's some water lily blooms. Pretty soon this whole area will be covered in water lily blooms. It also becomes a watering hole for my weenie dogs. So let's talk about fish. I got my fish at Walmart. I started with three goldfish. Know that they do not freeze in the winter if the water is still circulating. Um, they go deep down to the bottom of the pond and really close down their systems and they don't eat during the winter. The top of the pond, pond has frozen over from time to time, but underneath it's still liquid and fluid. As long as that pump is circulating, your fish will be okay. I don't have any experience with koi. I did know that koi eat pond plants, so if pond plants are important to you, you don't want to have koi. So that's why I chose goldfish. And I tell you, these goldfish have been super hardy. I've had this pond in place for 15 years. And those three original fish have produced so many babies that I gave 14 away last year to a guy that builds ponds and in trade for a bucket of toads. And so now I have toads in my, in my garden because of my fish trade, which is pretty cool. Did you know toads live for 30 years? Do you know they have no natural predators? Do you know that they eat slugs and snails and mosquitoes? Yep. So I wanted toads in the garden. So I have toads and they lay a bunch of eggs in my pond. So every night when it hits dark, the toads come from far and wide around my garden and they all head to the pond. It's like club med for my toads. It's crazy. So they, go to the pond and they start singing their song of their people and they start doing their mating and it's pretty cool it happens all night long they're very 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 loud and then about five o'clock in the morning they all start leaving the pond and going back to their various corners of the garden it's kind of cool so i keep my weenie dogs inside before uh, to let the toads do their thing and make sure I come out like at five in the morning to toad check the garden. Um, Cause if your dog were to accidentally get a toad, it's not gonna kill him. It'll make him foam at the mouth. Um, and they wouldn't like it at all. <laughs> and you probably would freak out. Um, I get asked if the fish eat the toad babies. No, they do not. Toads secrete a toxin 
and those eggs also are mildly toxic. So the fish know to stay away from them. So, you know, a toad has got a pretty good life. Does it have many predators? So what else can I tell you about the pond? So once I dug out the pond and smoothed it out, I used carpet foam underlayment to line the whole area. And then I got a pond liner from a pond supply store. A pond supply store will help you determine the best pond liner for your use. As you can see, my pond is pretty much in shade. So I didn't need a UV light pond liner. But if it's in full sun, you might want to consider doing that. And really, that's about it. You fill it up with water, line the edges with flagstone, and bam, there's your pond. If you guys have any questions or comments on what I did with this pond, please put them in the comment section down below. It's hard for me to tell you how to build a pond. I can just tell you what I did and the method that I used. I'm sure there's other methods out there. Um, you can choose to add a waterfall. Just remember when you choose to add a waterfall, your biofilter has to be a lot bigger and that equals a lot more money. So I did this on a bare bone budget. <laughs> and it's, it's served me well. My fish become my best friends when I come out with the orange container of Tetra goldfish food. So let's talk a little bit about how much it costs to do this pond. So the labor was done by me, so that was free. The liner was pretty expensive. I think I spent $200 on a very, very thick liner and it was really big. So I spent $200 on that, another $200 on the flagstones and then once every two years, I spend money on the filter box. It, they just don't seem to last longer than two years. I had these Louisiana iris in my garden and I dug them up last year and I gave them to a lot of my neighbors, but this clump I had left over, so I stuck it in that bucket and I thought, hmm, I wonder if they'll live in the pond. And so they are not only living, but they're blooming their heads off. And that bucket in there has no soil. It's just roots, just the plant. And you can see it's pretty happy. I don't apply chemicals to this ever. If your pond is in balance, it's a happy pond and it's not green. So I hope you enjoyed this short little video on how I built my pond and you might wanna consider putting a waterscape in your garden. I sure enjoyed mine. I love to come out here on my swing and watch the sunset and watch the fish jump and watch the toads come to the pond at night. And it's just so relaxing and you can't beat that sound of tinkling water. And it's, it's a soothing sound for me. So thank you so much for joining me today at Salon Girl Gardens and have a great day.